you probably have seen my Ryzen coverage so far, I believe. And you may have seen Navi coverage. Actually, none of that's done yet. But I have to dare everything from a filming standpoint in order. It wouldn't make sense otherwise. So, well, let's take it back and keep delivering some content. I have a lot of unboxing reviews to do. So, to kind of keep you going while I do some other performance videos. Today, Power Color. It's the only one they had. I'm okay with Power Color. The 5700 XT. Here's what's really interesting about this. I bought it from Micro Center launch day, obviously, for $349.99. They gave $50 off the already reduced price of $50. I don't know if they're still going to do that. That might have been just a launch day thing. But uh, just based off of what I've seen and heard, um, that's killer. I mean, RTX 2060 price for essentially um, R almost RTX 2070 Super from what I've seen. Uh, performance not quite somewhere between that and a regular 2070. Uh, that's fantastic. But let's take a really quick dive over the, the box, what's in it, the card, and all that stuff. And then there should be some benchmarks, hopefully on the channel at this point. Very simple slice on. We'll do both sides just to make it easier. Sapphire would have been my first choice, but they're all reference models, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Okay, uh, nothing on the box really interesting, it just talks about uh, you know, 7 nanometer RDNA architecture, FreeSync to HDR, Fidelity FX, all the features they talked about. Uh, some of them relevant, some of them not. Uh, and PCI Express 4, which we knew it was going to support that, but it's not going to have the bandwidth obviously to maximize or utilize that yet, but in the future we may run into that. So, a piece of heft to the card here. I don't think there is anything on the sides here. Oh, there's probably a booklet at the bottom. Yeah. Booklet here. I don't see any power cables. No. Good. You shouldn't be running, you shouldn't be running Model X to PCI Express anyway. Get a proper power supply. Okay, product needs external power connectors, please. Yeah, so it doesn't include. It. I'm happy to see that. I want to get an anniversary edition, but I found out, re realized that it wasn't to be. Uh, you can only get them directly from AMD, and it wasn't worth the extra money. But single blower style, um, it should perform okay. Add in board partners will probably do a better job, but. You know, generally, Andy always releases a reference design first month, and after that, you can expect more coming down the road. This does get powered by a 8-pin, uh, based on 6 plus 2 and a 6-pin, respectively. We already knew that as well. Uh, I.O., so the, um, DVI is gone, so we're rocking with, uh, looks to be standard uh, three display ports, one HDMI, which is perfectly fine with me. We have a PCI Express Gen 4 socket, I guess essentially. Um, and that's kind of it. So what's really nice about this is this definitely feel, it has a little bit of heft to it. Uh, it feels pretty premium in the hand. Uh, so I'm actually thinking that the cooling should be okay. Um, you know, the fins are pretty well spaced here. This fan's a little bit bigger than what I've seen. I really like the design. It actually has a little bit of a curve here. That's really cool. And no, I don't think it's damaged. It looks too, too uh, done correctly, I think, maybe. Yeah, but it's really nice. Uh, not super large, so my Vega 64 popped up uh, pretty high from that. So, And honestly, the other thing I want to give them credit for is including a backplate. That's nice. Uh, we don't really see that often uh, with AMD with reference designs. So having that on here is just, oh, I, I really like it. Um, got the void warranty sticker here. Not a fan. It's kind of BS, but they put it on there to deter people, so it is what it is. But um, that's pretty much it. 225 watts should perform really well. Uh, if I don't have benchmarks up yet, I will soon. Uh, comparing to uh, probably 1080 and Vega 64, I'm going to have to recreate <coughs> uh, the old system to a degree, but it's going to have some deviation differences, so just keep that in mind. So I was asked, well, how would you upgrade from Vega 64 to RX uh, 5700 XT? 
Well, the answer is now because I sold my Vega for three twenty-five and I paid three fifty for this, and this should perform at least a little better. The real answer is is uh, you know, meanwhile, if we do well, but the reality of it is is that I had to basically sell off a lot of stuff because I spent a lot of money. I, I have i5, i9, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 9, uh, I have three boards, three multiple memory kits, this, I mean, I do it for you guys, so, you know, hopefully you appreciate just basic little unboxings like this, I have uh, two motherboards to do as well, um, which they should probably pop up after this, uh, but hopefully you guys like it, hopefully you guys are happy about RX 5700 XT, it's a, it should be a really good mid-range card, it's really well priced, uh, adding board partners should do a pretty good job on the cooling, um, but as always, uh, this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, don't forget to thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you don't, leave a comment, get subscribed, buy everything, anything listed below, uh, but other than that, as always, I'll see you later on, down the road.